Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 25. It says, For this reason, and this is Jesus speaking, For this reason I, Jesus, say to you, Do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink or for your body as to what you will put on. Is life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air that they do not sow or reap or gather into barns and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you worth not much? Not, aren't you worth much more than they? All right. I want to share with you a quote this morning on the screen. The next one up there, and we're going to be referencing this quote in relation to several uh, verses in the book of in the book of Psalms and also in the Gospels. Let's go to the next slide first. If you don't mind, Sam, we'll come back to that. Go to the next slide. That's the one. It's a bit small, I'm sorry, on the screen there. But this is a lady that says, we have nothing to fear for the future unless what happens? We have nothing to fear for the future unless we forget how God has led us in the past. She says, except as we shall forget the way the Lord has led us, and his teaching in our past history. She was saying this because she was telling a story. She was relating all of the hardship in her family. Her husband had been very unwell. There had been some tremendous difficulties in her life. And at the end of her story, uh, this is um, the way she finishes. She says, even though all these things have happened to us, we still have nothing to fear as long as we remember how God has blessed us up to this point. And she said, I'm, I praise Jesus for leading me in this way, even though there's been some hard stuff. If we go back to that Psalms 8, and then we'll uh, skip on. Psalms chapter 8, and I think that's verse 4. Yes, it is verse 4. Psalms chapter 8, verse 4. And this is what it says. This is a question. What is man, or what is woman, that you take thought of him? And the son of man that you care for him? Why, why do we as humans have some value to God? Why would God care about us? This lady said, it, there's nothing to fear for the future unless we forget how God has led in the past. And yet Psalms 8 verse 4 is asking a question here in context. Why, why would God take care of us? Why would God take care of us? I'd like to invite my sister Dione to come forward at this time, if, if that's possible. I've asked three people to share personal stories. Please, please share with us what's happened in your life. Thank you very much. My name is Dione. Um, at the age of 16, um, I lost my um, first boyfriend. That actually broke my heart. Um, I stand here before you that I used to drink, I used to smoke dope, and I used to be a harlot. Um, from, from that, my heart broken. Um, my father died when he was 43, um, that tore me apart. I had a nephew that was in a car accident and four of them, one of them actually died. My grand grandmother and my auntie and my first cousins perished in a, in a fire at Davenport. That broke my heart. And I really hated God because I blamed God for all, all the pain that he put on his family. Um, 2000 and 2008, um, my, my mother um, got called to go to the hospital because she, she had her, it was appendix, appendix busted, so she had to go to the hospital. 
And then we had a phone call that we were asked by mum, the doctor wanted to see both myself and my auntie. And as we went up there, we knew something was, something was really wrong. And they come across a cancer, a collectoral, can collectoral cancer it was called, it's in the bowel. So um, my mother had to move to Adelaide for treatment. Um, with chemo and radiotherapy and there was there was that hope. I had a visit from my first cousin Aaron Stewart and he said to me, sis come to this church, come to this church to help you go through this. So I ended up coming to, coming to church as mum was in Adelaide having those treatment and going down there you always have hope. Um, that she's going to be well again. I remember one day that um, she invited, I was down in Adelaide at the time and we went to her last appointment and um, the doctor said in the room that there's no, no, nothing that they can do for her. And she looked at me and she asked me, what can she do? And I said to her, I said, Mum, I can't answer, I can't answer that for you. Whatever you decide, I will support you. From there, she didn't continue with the radiotherapy and um, the chemo, so we just walked out the hospital crying. And coming to church here and learning about the Lord has given me peace and that we will see our loved ones again. They are resting. It says that in the Bible. I'd, I'd like to also mention that those, day, those times that I despised God, I blamed him for, for all the pain that through grief and loss, there was one time when myself and another cousin that was driving, we drank, must have been about three, well over three different kinds of alcohol. We was driving, we were lucky that, we, that I'm still standing here. Jesus was with me. He saved me that night. He, I always think about going back to the footprints in the sand, that Jesus, there was one foot, set of footprints in the sand that through, our, through our, our trials and our hard times, Jesus is carrying us. And I, I tell my family today that, you know, that we will see our loved ones when Jesus returned. Wow. That's really deep. Thank you so much for sharing, Dione. Very, very, very significant. If I remember correctly, after this slide and the next slide, I think it says Dione, and then after that there's a verse out of... Um, Matthew chapter 10. I'd like to just draw your attention to it, and then I'll invite my sister Sam, I believe, is up next. This is in Matthew chapter 10, verses 29 to 31. This is... This is what Jesus says, and I'm sorry, I, used to, I should have used a bigger font, I'm sorry. It's a bit small there. But this is a continuation from Matthew chapter 6, we read just a few moments ago. This is Jesus talking again. He says, if you go to the marketplace, you can buy a couple of birds for one copper coin. He says, are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs of your heads are all numbered. Do not therefore fear. You are of more value than many sparrows. I'd like to invite uh, my sister Sam now, I believe. I think that's next. Come forward and uh, share with us uh, a brief story from her life. Thank you, Sam. Mine's not nothing to do with grief or loss, but obviously it's affected me emotionally and mentally, and 
um, during my school years in high school, um, year 9 to year 11, I got bullied quite a lot by a number of people and I'd come home crying and usually at school I'd be the silent one, I wouldn't say anything to anyone and obviously it's emotionally <laughs> hurt me <laughs> because the words they would say was obviously hurtful and like the saying sticks and stones may hurt my bones but words never hurt me is definitely not true yeah. because words can definitely hurt you even though um, it's not nothing to do with stones or anything and um, like mum and dad would always pray <laughs> and it was very hard and sometimes you just got to be really strong about it and like obviously pray to pray for help and that to God and um, just to help you guide through the years because I've successfully finished high school and I couldn't be happier well and done. I've um, in my third I've just finished my third year of uni doing teaching and um, my my plan is and obviously God's plan was for me to be a teacher and to um, to help children not be bullied or be prone to be bullied and my experience has come to that and I believe it's been a a good thing well to to do it. So thank you. Sorry about crying. Can I give you a hug? <laughs> yes, of course. Okay. <laughs> it takes a lot of courage to share a personal story that impacts us so so greatly and I've my sister Dione and my sister Sam have been very brave this morning. Thank you, ladies. There's another slide that comes up and then I want to invite my brother uh, Trevor up uh, after this slide. This is from the book of Psalms. Psalms 121. Psalms is right in the middle of your Bible. And Psalms is written by a number of different people just like you and me, just like, just like Dione and Sam and myself and Trevor and all of us that have stories. The book of Psalms is written by people that have a lot on their hearts. This is Psalms 121 and verse 3. God promises he will not... Allow your foot to slip. He who keeps you will not slumber, or he will not sleep. He's not sleeping because he's busy looking after us. That's God. God's taking care of us. God's taking care of us, uh, us his children. I'll invite my brother Trevor to come forward. Thank you, mate. Well... I was brought up a seven-day Adventist um, in a Christian family and a good mother and uh, father. And at the age of 14, I decided I wanted to do other things. Things were better out in the world. And uh, I started drinking at 14, started smoking um, um, and going out with bad women um, and all those ugly things that are out in that world. Anyway, years later when I was, oh, I don't know how old I was, I'd, I'd probably be at 30-something. Um, I'd tried to give up smoking for years but couldn't do it and I was sick and uh, for about six weeks and at the end of that six weeks I looked at the end of my bed and there was a packet of cigarettes there and I thought, oh, I'd love one of them. So I took one up and... It was so foul, I thought, oh, no, it's just me. And I took another puff, and it was that foul. I put it down, and I stumped it out, and I said, i never smoke again. So I oh, probably ten, I never smoked again. And about ten years later, um, I met a lady in the... I had a post office in Western Australia, and uh, she was very nice to me. And uh, I... Uh, didn't realise she was a seven-day Adventist. 
Anyway, she invited me to church. And I kept saying no. And uh, it went on and on. Then she invited me to camp at, in Perth. And I said no. And then one day I, she came in again. She said, oh, would you like to come to the camp again? And I said, oh, all right, I'll come down for one day. So I went down on the Sabbath and spent it down there at camp. And then... Uh, um, then she come back again into the post office. She said, oh, would you like to come to church in Harvey? And I go, oh, I've got something to do today or tomorrow. And uh, she said, you're welcome. Anyway, something prompted me that to go to church that day. So I did. And then uh, my uncle rang me over this period of time. and um, He said, I'm going to the Philippines. So uh, would you like... Uh, would you know anybody that would go with me? Anyway, I, I said no. Anyway, uh, I thought about it. I, I was going to go to Fiji in a few months' time, and I, I thought about it, and I thought, oh, I'm going with my uncle to the Philippines. So I did. Anyway, I eventually met Evelyn, who was a seven-day Adventist, and my uncle said to me, he said, uh, before he gave me her name, he said, you've got to go back to church. And I said, oh, that's easy, yeah, I'll go back to church. Anyway, um, all through that time I didn't know the Holy Spirit must have been working upon me. Um, and you don't realise until it, you know, afterwards. Um, I didn't even know how I was going to tell Evelyn that I worked on Sabbath. Because um, I did, and I kept telling her, I'm going up in the bush, you know, on Sabbath, which was where my work was, <laughs> in the bush, uh, at a refinery. But... Um, yeah, the Holy Spirit worked upon me and uh, uh, eventually I married Evelyn and um, I came back to church. It took me uh, oh, about five months or six, no, eight months before I got baptised um, after we come back to Australia. So, I, And the way I got over the um, working was um, I just quit and I went and lived in the Philippines for three or four months. And that solved that. And when I come back, Evelyn and I um, took a job together. So uh, we worked together uh, in our work. So that got over, that solved all that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, let the Holy Spirit lead you and, and you'll uh, know the way to travel. So, all right. Thank you. Just before we look at the last slide, I just want to draw your attention to something that happened this morning. I don't know if you've noticed it yet, but when we remember how God has touched us in our personal experience, and as we share that with somebody else, we are reliving. We are, we're going through again. And as, as uh, Dione shared her experience with us of going to visit her mum in hospital, it was almost like she was imagining herself back there in that hospital room, seeing mum and talking to mum. For Sam, when she was sharing her story, it was so real for her that, that all of the thoughts and the emotions, I think, started coming back a little bit. The reason that's significant is because each one of us have an opportunity to preach a sermon to one of our mates or one of our friends. And people are wondering, as we, as we talk, people are saying, why should I follow Jesus? Why should I be a Christian? What difference does it make? And if we start sharing our stories with people, hey, you know, my mate so-and-so, let me share with you what happened to my life. That is the most powerful advertising there is. You see on the TV and the shopping channel and stuff, they'll get somebody and they pay them some money to come up and talk about their experience with this product. You won't believe how terrible my house was and then I got this vacuum cleaner. And it's the best vacuum cleaner ever. And I go in and dust all the dust around the corner and everything else. And all of a sudden, people want to start buying that vacuum cleaner because this person has been telling them about their personal experience with a vacuum cleaner. How much more powerful if we start sharing our stories? I used to have these challenges, or even, even this last week. My wife and I had a pretty nasty week. And we got discouraged and we pray and we ask God to help us. We have this tremendous sense of peace. God will take care of it. God will work it out. And then it started falling into place. Even though before it looked pretty bleak, after it looked a whole lot better. 
let's just look at that last quote again, please, um, Sam. It's going to be this, the one after this one. And it's the same quote we had at the very beginning of the service, and I'm sorry the font is small. But as we go into our week, as we remember the way that God has blessed us, thanks for that, well done, well done. Thank you, Sam. As we remember the way that God has blessed us, don't just remember it for yourself, but find someone to share it with. Tell someone about your week, and tell them about the bad stuff, if, if it's appropriate, or the stuff that you've got that got you down. All of us are humans, all of us go through tough stuff, none of us are perfect, but we can share, this is how I got, out of, got rid of the dust in my house, this is the vacuum cleaner that I used, but this, is, this is the way that the Lord helped me, and that story is the most powerful sermon you'll ever preach. Let's just uh, maybe stand together and pray and ask God to help us remember his leading in our past and help us to share that as we uh, meet with our brothers and sisters. Let's pray together. Our dear, very kind and gracious and loving and very thoughtful Heavenly Father, sometimes we get discouraged. We get... Uh, kind of down, as, as Dione was saying, as she was going through the challenges in her life, she's wondering, where is God? Why is all this bad stuff happening? How can there be a loving God when there's such terrible suffering? Help us to remember, Lord, the ways that you guide us, the ways that you help us, not just for our benefit, but also for the benefit of those that we talk to and the, those that we live in the midst of. And we ask that as we go into this week, as you bring to our minds the good ways that you've led us in the past, help us first of all to be encouraged for ourselves, but also secondly, that we would share our, our wonderful news in a way that encourages other people too. Thank you for walking with us. Thank you for the footprints in the sand, like Dione mentioned, that indicate that sometimes you carry us through the darkest trials. We put ourselves in your hands this week and in your arms too if, uh, if the conditions uh, make it necessary. We love you so much. Thank you for leading us. Thank you for carrying us. We pray these in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.